So y'all ready for part seven of Crazy Faith? All right, get out your notepads, because we're about to go in. Today we are starting part seven of a series we're calling Help Me. You got to say it one more time, because we're in an arena right now. This series is called We've been talking about the irrational things that God calls people to do when they start actually living for him. This definition of crazy faith, it means thoughts and actions that lack reason. But we are trusting fully in what you cannot explicitly prove. And we've gone through all these different types of faith. We started with crazy faith, then we went to baby faith, and then we talked about maybe faith, and then, and then we, we talked about wavy faith, and then Pastor Jeremy last week, hazy faith, the week before that, Bree taught us about daily faith, and I got one for you today, but let's go to the scripture first. Matthew chapter 26, verse 40, and I'm going to read this from the message version because it captured me. It says, when, when he had came back, this is Jesus, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and, he, Gethsemane and he was trying to pray before he went to the cross and he asked his three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, to just wait with him and pray for a little bit. He, he caught them napping. And it said, when he came back to the disciples, he found them sound asleep, snoring, drooling. He said to Peter, Peter, can't you stick it out with me for a single hour? And I bet Peter was like, Jesus, I wouldn't even sleep. I wouldn't even sleep for real though. I was resting my eyes. <laughs> that was my line as a kid. I would tell my parents I was asleep. I was resting my eyes. I was knocked out. Um, it said, stay alert. Be in prayer. So you don't wander into temptation without even knowing. Ugh. That ain't what I'm preaching today, but woo. Isn't it crazy like when you sleep? When your eyes are closed to things that are right in front of you, you find yourself tempted. When you keep scrolling and watching things that you're not supposed to, but you're dead to it, and, and temptation just shows up at your front door. Yeah, that's not the message, but um, it says you're in danger when that happens. This is the part I want you to focus in. It says, this is Jesus talking. He said, you know what, y'all? There is a part of you that is eager and ready for anything in God. Like, there's a part of you that has crazy faith. Like, God, whatever you say, let's do it. Let's go. Let's move. Let's, let's conquer. But then look what he says. But there's another part in you, too. That's as lazy as an old dog. Sleeping by the fire. Today, I don't want to talk to you about the part of you that's ready to go and the crazy faith. Today, I want to talk about the other side of you that's in the same body. The part of you that on Sunday will be jumping and hyping, and then on Monday won't do what it takes to see the breakthrough you believed for. Today, I want to talk to the part of you that, that is not going to get Instagram and nobody's going to praise you for. The title of today's message is, some of y'all guessed it, Lazy Faith. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to help you because this is the part that will keep us from the promise if we do not submit the lazy parts of us to the all-powerful creator. And some of y'all are sitting here like, uh-uh, Pastor Mike, that ain't me. I work hard. I do everything that God tells me to do. I'm, I'm the one. And yeah, in some areas that you let us see. But if we're honest, we all have areas in our life where we do not have the strong, eager faith to do it, and we have lazy faith. Can you think right now, so you don't point to your neighbor, do you know an area in your life that your faith is lazy? Come on, lift your hands if you got one. And if somebody, lift your hand back there, Shirley, I see you. And you don't have to admit it to me today, but what you do have to is come face to face with that so that God can correct that. And what I'm finding out so many times is that people are eager for the promise, but they're too lazy to pick up their pen. Uh-huh. They're eager for the healthy marriage, but they're too lazy to go to marriage counseling. Some people in this room are eager for the relationship, but they're too lazy to work on their reality. 
I want her to be 6'6 and fine and have a degree. You don't even brush your teeth in the morning. You don't even, like, you, you don't do your hair no more. You wear the same outfit every week. Like, you won't even work on your reality, but you want something. And so many people in this room will come in here and get inspired and get crazy faith, but never deal with the lazy faith. The thing that's on the inside of you that knows God can, but you won't do the work to make sure it does happen. Ah. And I know this won't be popular, so I amen myself before I came out here today. But some of y'all are eager for a successful business, but you're too lazy to budget. At the end of every month you broke. But you make sure you take your pictures with your coffee from Starbucks that you don't even finish and you really can't afford. But you want God to bless the promise. But you're too lazy to steward over what he's given you already. Somebody shout at me, lazy faith. I'm in somebody's business right now. Because that outfit you're wearing is delaying your promise. The car that you're driving is delaying what God has for you. That Remy, those extensions. Your nails are making your promise No, You are in a place where if you don't come into the place where you can evaluate where you really are, God has an amazing promise for you. But if you don't confront your lazy faith, you will stand outside of the promise that God has for you. See, this is something I want you to write down. <laughs> People are willing to get a prophetic word, but they won't do the prophetic work. Everybody wants a prophetic word, but they do not want to do the prophetic, everybody say work. Do you know your work is prophetic? See, when you work right now on whatever God's placed in front of you, like it's something already, it's speaking to your future. It's calling your future into alignment. When I was speaking to a youth group with no microphone and I was sweating and sweating out of suits and doing examples and doing all of that stuff and wasn't 35 people in the room, I spoke this into existence with my work. God already spoke it over my life, but if I never cracked the Bible, if I never took the challenge to speak in front of people, if I never tried, I would be sitting here with a prophetic word, but no prophetic work to match it. And I dare say to you in this place today, there are too many people in the body of Christ waiting on God, and he's waiting on you. Well, I just wish God would move me out of this house. You haven't even raked the leaves in 17 years. No, nobody, nobody would even want this because you haven't put your hands to it and taken care of it. And God is saying, I'm a God of stewardship. I watch what you do with what I've already given you. And I'm, I'm gonna speak the word over you. I'm gonna tell you what I want to happen in your life. I'm gonna give you an impression, but you have to start doing, everybody say the work. Now I'm not talking about striving. Cause some of y'all just heard, that's why I knew I was just supposed to go out and just take over. No, no, hold on. You get instructions in the presence of God. Not, not striving, but striding. And when God puts something in front of you, you kill it. When God tells you to go, you go full force. And I, what I'm seeing in this is that the prophetic work looks different for everybody else. For some people, it's physically doing something. For ev other people, the work is not doing something. See, some of y'all, the work you need to do is stay home. You want to be everywhere doing everything. But God says, I need you to stay in a place where I can speak to you and develop you into who I want you to be. But some of you, the work is going out. Well, I'm just a natural introvert, but God's called you to touch the world. So are you going to allow your, your preference or your personality to rule your life? Or are you going to tell your purpose that, no, 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 God has something greater for me than what my personality says. And now my personality has to submit to my purpose. But that's going to take everybody say work. Uh-huh. And some of us are just too lazy for that. How many people in your mind, like you see people going all out and just be honest, you say, it don't take all that. 
Come on, some of y'all think that about me every Sunday. Like, Pastor Mike, like, sit on a stool. Like, it don't take all, like, it don't take all of that. And for somebody else, they could sit on a stool up here and do it because everybody's not gifted and called to do the same exact thing. But when I get up here, I know what God's put in me. And if I sit up here and give you 30% of what I'm doing, I did not put my prophetic work with his prophetic word. And some of you, you're saying, well, I don't have all of this. You got a pen and a paper. You haven't even write, written the vision down and make it plain. And I'm trying to move you from getting hype in a series to seeing it in your house. I do not want you to thank God for what he did for our church. The real testimony is when I come to your address. The real testimony is when we look at your family life. Y'all better hear me. The real testimony is when your marriage has been changed by not faith that we just talk about, but faith that people can see. Do you know that you're the only Bible some people will read? Amen. They're waiting for it to come alive in the book of Takesha. I know we read John and Luke, and, but they want, the, the, they want to see it in the book of Travis. In the book of Larnell. In the book of Bob. That's where they're going to find out that Jesus is real. So we have to do the work. Everybody say work that God has called us to do and that's why I'm coming to you today and I'm going to confront your lazy faith forgive me right now for coming at you this hard on this first service that I'm preaching but somebody needs to be shaken out of complacency and somebody else needs to be shaken out of the lethargic way that they've been living look at what look look, look what this quote says it said hard work pays off in the future but laziness pays off now Some of us are living in the fruit of our laziness. And so, and so we have to confront this notion that we want the promise without the process. But God says it's time for you to embrace the process. And that means you're going to have to let go of lazy. Just say that. Let go of lazy. Let go of lazy. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be real practical today. Let go of lazy. Some of us will die because of the way we eat. Can I be honest with you? Doing funerals for people who are obese is, is one of the quickest ways to snuff out the purpose and praying over people's lives. Because so many people die with purpose Y'all know the richest place is the graveyard? All the ideas, all of the things that we've never heard of before. It's in the grave right now because people were too lazy in their everyday life to become who God called them. He called you to be it. He called you to do it. He called you for more. But you're too lazy to go to a counselor. You have issues and trauma from your childhood you don't know how to communicate and you're 58 years old and you had kids but you still when you get angry you go into rage but you're too lazy to confront the issue that happened to you when you were 10 remember we say stuff like this it don't take all that and y'all know some people are shutting me off right now because i'm tap dancing on your business i'm, I'm in your house right now but we can never get the prophetic promise and the prophetic word if we don't do the prophetic word. Okay, 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 okay. I think y'all got this now. So today I'm going to show you a group of people who didn't have lazy faith. And, and, and they didn't let nothing stop them from believing that God could do a miracle. And I hope that you're going to see the type of lives that God's called Transformation Church and Transformation Nation to live right now. I want you to go to Luke chapter 5 verse 17. Because the opposite of lazy faith is active faith. Everybody say active faith. It's faith that'll move when God says move. It's faith that'll figure it out. It's faith that will go and do what God's called him to do. And we run into these guys, and the title of it is Jesus Heals a Paralyzed Man. It says, one day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law were sitting nearby. And the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. So Jesus was healing all types of people. Verse 18. Some men carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. 
They came. And they tried to take him inside to Jesus. Now, I want you to put this picture in your head right now. Is that Jesus is healing everybody. You got a cold? Boom. Oh, is that a hand withered? Ah. Is your sinuses clogged up? Like he just, <laughs> he healing everybody. So word starts spreading. And these guys, we don't know exactly who they are at this moment. But they think about their friend. And they say, yo, Jesus is healing people. Why don't we go get Jerome? And the other friend was like, I don't really want to go get Jerome right now. But this may be Jerome's only opportunity to come out of this paralyzed position that he's in. And this is what lazy faith would have done. <laughs> lazy faith won't carry what seems insignificant to Christ. See, when you're lazy, you're in a situation where Christ is doing something and you'd be like, yeah, that don't matter. My broken situation doesn't matter to God. My, my, my family issue doesn't matter to God. What's happening at my job doesn't matter to God. But these dudes had active faith. They had crazy faith. Lazy faith would say it doesn't matter. But these dudes said, we're going to carry our friend to go see Jesus. Now, I want you to get the picture of this. They went to where he was. What up, Romy Ron? What's up, bro? <laughs> we heard Jesus is healing people. Don't move. He was paralyzed. <laughs> Don't move. We about to take you to Jesus. And they had to use their own strength, their own faith. This is what crazy faith says, to actually pick up and carry you to a place where we believe you don't even believe it yet. He didn't ask to be taken there. It was the faith of these guys who said, we know God's in the healing business, so we have the faith. Some of y'all are going to have the faith to speak life over family members, faith to speak, oh, y'all don't hear me, over businesses. They not even asking for it. But lazy faith would have left them there. But what crazy faith does is it says, hold on, we're going to carry you. And these dudes carry him to Jesus. Why would you carry something insignificant to Jesus? It's because he cares. And I don't know who this is for, but I need to minister to somebody right now. Some of you have been in this room and you have not been taking the things you really need to take to Jesus to him because you don't think he cares. You think that it's, oh, that's not enough to bother God with that. But look. What the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. And today, I don't know what you've been carrying in faith, but some of you have been carrying it to friends. Some of you have been carrying it to a bottle. Some of you have been carrying it to an addiction. And Jesus is sitting in the house and he's saying, hey, I actually care about the thing that's paralyzed in your life. I actually, that thing that's deformed in your life, I care about it. Could you bring it to me? So the faith of these friends, they, they, they realize that lazy faith won't carry what seems insignificant to Christ, but crazy faith casts all cares. And today somebody needs to cast your cares before you leave this place. Today you're going to throw something on this altar or throw something out to God that you're going to say, no longer will I carry this weight alone. I'm casting this to Jesus. Now look at verse 19 because something strange happens. They carried this paralyzed man to Jesus, but they tried to take him inside to Jesus. Because in my mind, that's what happens. Like, oh, they was probably gassing him up. Bro, this is your last day crippled, bro. Bro, you about to be able to hoop. Bro, you going to the league. Look how long you are, bro. I'm like, wait. They was probably gassing him up on the way to Jesus because of the miracles they heard. And they said, bro, we're going to take you right in. We're going to lay you at his feet. He's going to do the little, ah. And then you're going, ah. I'm telling you, bro, just hold on. It's coming. But look what happened in verse 19. But they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. What happens when you have faith enough to get to a place and then the plans don't work out like you think it was supposed to? What happens when God told you to move to Tulsa but then the job didn't come through? 
what happens when, when you knew you were supposed to marry the person and then y'all started arguing on the honeymoon? You was like, I made the wrong decision. <laughs> like, see, let me tell you what lazy faith will do. Ah! Lazy faith thinks an attempt is adequate. Like most of us, we would have carried that man all the way there, seen the crowd and be like, well, we tried. Write the business? Well, they deny me for the loan. Try to have a baby and they told me I'd be infertile? Welp, I tried. And what happens is we think that an attempt is adequate. And we allow the crowd that surrounds our promise to detour us from what God has called us to. I'm preaching in this place. Most turn around at the sign of turmoil. You think that's a sign from God, but turmoil, honestly, is one of those things that God uses to transform you. <laughs> turmoil, the crowd, the obstacle to get to what God has called you to, many times it's a test of your faith. Maybe the crowd was curated. Maybe God designed that struggle for you. Maybe the setback has significance. Maybe the obstacle is an opportunity. I don't know who I'm talking to in this building today and you sitting here looking at me like I'm a concert performer but somebody needs to realize in this room that many of the obstacles that you are going through right now are proof that you're supposed to be there ah, you thought them giving you a demotion was proof that you were supposed to leave but this is just proof that God's word is going to come to pass in my life if you believe it give God a shout of praise in this room See, we're in a season of crazy faith as a church. And if the crowd or the obstacle would have been my sign to give up on this place, we wouldn't be sitting here today when they told us we're not accepting any offers on the Spirit Bank Event Center. What did we tell them? We'll check back every week. Some of y'all have stopped because you tried once. I tried to do the business. I tried to forgive them. I tried to mend that relationship. I tried church. And God's saying one attempt is not enough when you know the promise is on the other side. Like if you knew everything you needed was on the other side of a locked door, what would you do? I, I mean, if your whole year's salary was on the other side of a door and if you just got in, it was yours, some of y'all would, y'all put your head through the door. You, you'd be throwing kids through windows. <laughs> she said, yep. <laughs> Who are her kids? <sighs> but, but that's why we need to refer back to James chapter 1 verse 3. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Like when these dudes walked up and the crowd was there, I know there was a couple people with lazy faith because they was like, well, but there was at least one person that was like, oh, shoot. I eat, I eat, I eat, I eat, I eat, I eat, I eat. And they did not see the crowd as the detour. They just saw it as a platform for God's power to be seen. They saw it that God's gonna have to do something real crazy now. Oh, y'all better hear me. He gonna have to go over and beyond. But y'all know we serve the God that does exceedingly. <laughs> Abundant, oh, y'all better help me. Above all we can ask, think, or even imagine. So, 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 so lazy faith thinks an attempt is adequate, but let me tell you what crazy faith thinks. Crazy faith says, I won't quit. Some of y'all need to get that attitude in your heart right now. You tried the business before, but I'm not going to quit. I, I, I tried to get into that school once before, but I'm not going to quit. Somebody say, I won't quit. Some of y'all right now have divorce papers ready for your marriage. I feel this so strongly right now. But the reason y'all are getting a divorce is because neither of you actually tried. It's been lazy faith. You've been praying prayers. I hear this by the Spirit. You've been praying prayers. God fixed them. 
But today in this message, I believe that somebody's hearing this message and they're going to realize that it's not in God fixing them. It's in you doing the work for God to fix you. And there's going to be something. I need somebody to just believe with me right now because God wants marriages to work. I believe that relationships are being restored in this mall. I feel the presence of God in this place. I believe that people are going to go back and say, we got to give this our real effort now. We're not going to walk in lazy faith. One attempt is not okay. We won't quit. Somebody say, I won't quit. I feel the presence of God in this place. Crazy faith won't quit. And so these dudes get here. There's a crowd. And the crowd's telling them to quit. But look what happens in verse 19. So they went up to the roof and took off some tiles. Hold up. I got tons of questions. They walk up to the scene. Y'all fool? We can't get in. You sure? That's my cousin Reggie right there. Reggie! Y'all know how y'all do. If y'all see a family member or a friend anywhere. We can't get in? Cool, 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 cool. Uh, Romy. So we about to do something a little different. Um, are you afraid of heights? Because <laughs> we about to uh, go on the roof and take some tiles off of somebody else's house. Lazy faith, write this down, won't rip off the roof. Lazy faith says, nah, the doctors gave me a report and I guess, you know, it gave me three years to live, four if I do these things, and that's the only way it can happen. See, rip the roof off faith, knows that what everybody else think is the only way it can happen, that there's always another way. Somebody say another way. I feel this thing. These dudes looked at the door and the windows and said, ain't no way we can get in there. But they said, I have to rip the roof off anointing right now. We gonna figure out a way to get on top of this roof where nobody else is. See there, uh, no. See there comes a faith that you might be the first one to step out and do something. There may be a faith that they tell you you should stay in a converted grocery store, but God called you to be the first to go into an arena. You need to know that there was nobody else on the roof, but they had the faith. To everybody say, rip the roof off in your life. Ah! What have you considered? There is no way. And God's saying, there's still the roof. There ain't no way me and my dad's relationship will be healed. There's still the roof. That means I would have to apologize. <laughs> that means... That means I would have to drive there because I know he ain't coming here. And he said, you, you said there was no way, but there's still the roof. <laughs> See, lazy faith, some of y'all are right there in it right now. Like your, your, your lazy faith is being exposed right now because you're thinking of your situation. You say it shouldn't take all that. But there is no way that this man is going to be healed unless they have the faith to do something that has not been done. And this is why I'm asking everybody to reevaluate your why. Because your why has to be worth it. When they were about to give up, they kept looking at their paralyzed friends and say, this may be his own opportunity. So I'm going to rip the roof off for him. And some of you, you've had the wrong why. You work for money. That's the wrong why. And that's why when God asks you to step out in faith, you can't do it because your why is not strong enough <laughs> to believe. So every time you look at it, you just go for the better promotion and all this. And God said, I wanted you to be a business owner, but you want to work for people all your life because you don't have the faith to trust me. And so we'll keep it right here. And you're saying, well, God, why am I so broke all the time? Because you still have not gone to the roof. And, and, and today... I want you to know as we sit in this arena, we didn't, we didn't want this arena so that we could just have a big church. 
because we knew Transformation Church was a roof, rip, rip the roof type of church. That we needed a place big enough for people to come and families to come to be able to be transformed in Christ. That's why today I take time to thank and honor every person who gives at Transformation Church. Because when you give here, you're helping rip the roof off for somebody else. You don't hear me? Every volunteer out in the parking lot and out in the children's ministry and out in there, they're ripping the roof off for generations to be changed. Ah! Everybody who comes to prayer on Monday night and you pray over all these seats. You are making a way for the real roof to be ripped off of people's lives. And this is where God wants all of us to be. See, see, see let, let me help you. Lazy faith won't rip the roof off, but crazy faith says, hand me the hammer. Like, that's, that's, that's the season I'm in right now. They told me there's no way we can do it. Hand me the hammer. God's going to give me some type of crazy instruction that nobody else will do, but I will. Do I got anybody in here who's tired of being on the ground when your miracle's so close to you? No, I need you to hear me right now. And, and, and something's rising up on the inside of you. The faith that'll rip the roof off. Somebody say, rip the roof. I don't know, I feel the spirit of Thor coming over me in the name of, somebody about to hand me a hammer. Put that picture on the screen. This is what I feel like in my spirit right now. I need everybody to see the, the avatar of what I feel like. That's what I feel like right now. Hand me the hammer. But is there about 500 people that have crazy faith to believe that there's another way that God can do this? He's going to rip the roof off of your situation. Rip the roof off of every limitation. He's going to rip the roof off. I don't know, but that's how I feel right now. Y'all feel me? I feel that. So, so, so look what happens. So, so they, they start taking tiles off and ripping the roof off. Now, I need you to realize this wasn't their house. So they didn't get permission to rip the roof off. So they knew it was going to cost them. At the moment they started believing in that type of faith, they were willing to pay the price of what it took to rip the roof off and pull their friend down. They did not have lazy faith. They were willing to work. And this is the thing I want you to see because there's a lot the Bible don't say. So what I'm asking everybody to do is read your Bible all the time because your faith grows by hearing the word of God. But, but what ends up happening is I want you to also read what the Bible don't say. I'm going to teach you how to do this right now. It said, then they lowered the sick man. Next verse. Then they lowered the sick man on his mat down into the crowd right in front of Jesus. There is so much stuff there that we did not talk about. Right. How did they get through the crowd? Where did they find a ladder? Put the house on that Jesus was in, because they need to see this. They don't, they don't understand this right now. <laughs> to me, in my holy imagination, this is what it looked. Oh, y'all mad because it's a trap house? But in my mind, this is where Jesus would hang out in places where nobody else wanted him to be. Uh, the, <laughs> I thought he came for those who were sick and hurt. Y'all some fake religious Christians. But if Jesus was here, he would be holding revivals in the trap house. Ah! Somebody's like, Sally, the trap house? What is that? Like a mouse trap? Like what? But I imagine this is the scene. And they bring their paralyzed friend up to him. And they're like, hey, bro, we're going to go on the roof. Uh... <laughs> Let me, hold on one second. Let me... Okay, no, that's not going to work. Uh, so we, we got to find a way to get up there. We got to climb the ladder with a paralyzed man on a mat. Some of y'all can't climb stairs with your newborn baby. This is a full grown man on a mat. And I just want you to see all the things we didn't talk about. Then it said they lowered him. They lowered him in front of Jesus. They didn't come there with a rope. They didn't come prepared to create a pulley system 
to lower their friend in. They might have took off their robes and tied them together and made some Boy Scout. And like, we don't know what they did to be able to do it, but they lowered him. I'm glad I wasn't in the group because if I was in the group, I'd be like, just drop him. <laughs> he already paralyzed. <laughs> And what's the worst that could happen? We believe him for his healing, Jesus. That fool would have just, he would have fell out <laughs> in front of Jesus. We'd be like, my bad. <laughs> you know he was heavy getting up that ladder. I'd be like, here fool, like get your healing. Thank God I wasn't in this story. Lord, forgive me. But I, I, want you, I want you to see. I want you to see how much stuff we didn't talk about. It said they lowered him, and so that means they had to work together and communicate. And then look at the last detail. It says they lowered him right in front of Jesus. That means they didn't just start hammering anywhere on the roof. They didn't just start making decisions. I'm about to do it. They, they investigated Where's Jesus? Is Jesus in this relationship? Is Jesus in this job? They, ah, they investigated. Do I sense Jesus? Do I feel Jesus? Do I see Jesus? Ah! And they said, this is the spot where Jesus is. So we're going to rip the roof off right here. Hand me the hammer. And they lowered him right in front of Jesus. This is what I want to help somebody know who has lazy faith. Ugh. Lazy faith won't figure it out. We don't talk about the mystery of God enough in church. We want the certainty of God. We want God to give us, if the steps of a righteous man are ordered, give me the orders, Lord. And I will not move until I get an order. Aye, aye, sir. But these dudes had faith enough to be able to work and figure out the in-between. And some of you are sitting in this room so lazy because you're saying, well, God hasn't told me anything. Well, God, and this is the moment where you have to figure it out. They don't mention what they did to get up there. It could have been ugly. It could have been them one dude holding on top of each other and somebody on his hand and them creating a pulley system to get everybody up. And so we, it, could have took, it could have took them hours. We read it like it just happened in a moment. We read it like it was like, and then they just hopped up on the roof. But the fact is, they got to the place that they needed to be to rip off the roof and figured out how to get their friend right in front of Jesus. Lazy faith won't figure it out, but crazy faith can't settle. Amen. Some of you, there is a righteous like frustration that God is bringing in you for situations and things that are going in your life. Like this ain't it. This can't be it. And what that is, is your crazy faith starting to rise up and say, I can't settle. Somebody say, I can't settle. And some of you have been so lazy that said, hey, this is, I guess this is what God has for me. And there's something in you that's starting to get a fire as we go through the series and say, I can't settle. Somebody, one more person say, I can't settle. I can't settle. These men had crazy faith, but they had the same opportunity to have lazy faith. Obstacle after obstacle, trial after trial, not having all the directions and all the instructions, but they had to figure it out. And then one last thing happened that messed me up. Look, look, cause, cause you need to know that God wants to work in you and give you the power to do what he's called you to do. Look at Philippians chapter two, verse 13, probably my favorite scripture in all the Bible. It says, for God is working in you, giving you both the desire, another translation says the will and the power to do what pleases him. I believe those guys had inspiration from God to figure out how to get on the roof. And nobody else around, all the crowds, they didn't have the wisdom. But these dudes said, God, you see our broken, paralyzed, distraught situation. Our why is bigger than what we feel right now. 
So we're going to have crazy faith to believe that you can do something. And they started moving in it. And then verse 20, the craziest thing happens. Look at it. It says, Jesus, he probably got some like dust particles like falling on his head and he was trying to like play it off like, oh my God. <laughs> but God, me, I say, like, what are y'all? <laughs> hmm. Ouch. <laughs> Look what it says. Seeing their, what is that word? Whose faith? Who are they? Verse 18 gives us the slightest clue to who they are. Some men, they have no names. They have no titles. They aren't the pastor of the church. They aren't the CEO of the co company. Jesus seeing their faith. It made him active. See, active faith makes Jesus active. Amen. He said, now, hold up. Now, I know ain't no ladder out there. Y'all just lowered this man right here in front of me like that. Y'all know I'm giving my, this is a good talk. But y'all, y'all faith interrupted me. What happens when you have a faith that interrupts what God was already doing? And makes him say, like, I could go past this, but I got to pay attention to this type of faith. And they had no names. And it said, some men. Ah. He said, because of your faith, their faith turned Jesus' attention to the young man. And he said, young man, hey, all your sins, they're forgiven. He didn't say no sinner's prayer. He didn't make him confess what he did. He said, in the atmosphere of faith, I can take stuff that looks completely paralyzed and bring it into a brand new place of transformation. Now, look at it. I want you to hear me. I want you to say this. And please, we're only going to be in here just a few more minutes. Please don't distract people by leaving in this moment, okay? Lazy faith wants credit for the effort they put out. The way you know somebody's lazy in their efforts is they want to make sure they get credit for it. Like, if it was some of us, we'd be like, hey, y'all putting this story in the Bible, right? Like, I put my name in there. My name is Jairus, Jerome Jenkins. I need to be right there next to Paul, Samuel, even Barnabas. Like, get me in the book. The Bible says some men. Because lazy faith gets, wants credit for their effort. But let me tell you about crazy faith. Crazy faith gets credit in eternity. Like, the things God's going to call you to do won't be seen on this side of heaven. And that's why Colossians 3.23 says, whatever you do, work. Everybody say work. work. Work at it with your whole heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So many people in this room right now, like those men, who have an opportunity today, tomorrow, to either lean into crazy faith or lazy faith. And today, those are the two natures that are fighting you every day. I remember this poem that really impacted me. It says, two natures beat within my chest. One is foul and one is blessed. One I love. And one I hate, the one I feed will dominate. And I'm asking you, the Bible clearly tells us we all have a side of us that's eager to do what God's called us to do. And then we have that other side of us that's lazy as an old dog sitting by fire. Ah. And my question is, what are you going to feed this week? How are you going to feed your faith? Are you going to give yourself an excuse not to read your word or put your marriage first or spend time with your kids or finish the assignment, keep to the word that you told people you were going to do? Or are you going to say, you know what? 
I got I to gotta step over into this crazy. I got to have that rip the roof off faith. I got to have that faith that looks at crowds and obstacles and say, God's still calling me past this point right here. Yeah. Well, pastor, how do we do that? We know faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The word of God. This whole series is taking you back to the thing that will build your faith. And that's the word of God. Next week, I'm going to finish this story. It's going to be Lazy Faith Part 2. And you do not want to miss this because the next part of this is about to take the wig off of you. <laughs> but today, I want to pause right here. And I want us to close our eyes right in this place right now. Come on, close your eyes. Take a moment for yourself. And I want you to figure out. I want you to choose right now how you're going to feed your faith. I know the doctor's report was bad. I know this was a bad week for your marriage. I know this was a frustrating time with your children. I, I know the report came back and it didn't seem good. But in this place, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God would activate you to have the faith to not be detoured by the crowd to pick up the broken things and bring them to him to find a way to figure out what's not working and get to the roof so you can rip it off and i'm i'm praying that you'd have the humility to not want credit for everything that god's going to do right now but know that some things he's going to ask you to do and you're not going to see it until you get in his presence face to face father i thank you for this church if you know that you need to switch over from lazy faith to crazy faith in an area of your life would you please just lift your hands all over this room online right now i want you to lift your hands i'm about to pray for you father you see your children ah. And I thank you that right now in this place, in your presence, Father, that you are moving us from a place that has been unwilling to use our energy and effort. And you're moving us into a place that will work. Faith without works is dead, is what James tells us, Father. And today, we're asking you to move us and give us the grace to do the work, the prophetic work, that will bring forth the prophetic word. Thank you that every marriage and every family and every business, and every heart, and every mind would not be stuck in lazy faith. But today I command under the power of God that we would move into crazy faith. We break every chain of generational habits that have made us be the way that we are. And we step into the new creation that you called us to be in Christ Jesus. This week we will hear the word and it will transform us from the inside out. We praise you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we agree. Hey, listen, right there, stay in that same posture. There's people in here who have never accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And I need everybody to just stay still for one second because this is why our church exists. If you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, today, I want to give you that opportunity. It's the thing that took me from a liar, a cheater, somebody who was addicted to pornography. And it did not make me a perfect man, but it made me a progressing man. Amen. Today, I want to give you the chance to walk in crazy faith. Well, I've never seen God. I don't know if he's real. You haven't seen wind or Wi-Fi either. But you know it's real. And today in this place, the presence of God is here to heal you. If you're in this room, we're about to pray. And you're saying, Pastor Mike, I want to make Jesus Christ my personal Lord and Savior. Don't worry about your friend, your neighbor, your girlfriend, anybody you came with. Today, tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day of salvation. If you're in this room or watching online and you're saying, this, this is for me. I want to step into crazy faith. This is going to be my rip the roof off faith. My friend invited me and invited me and invited me. And now I'm in the presence of God. And God's saying, here's your moment to get healed. Here's your moment to be transformed. If that's you. On the count of three, I just want you to lift your hands. And you're saying, yeah, I want to, I want to do that, Pastor Mike. I want to give my life to Christ. Or I want to rededicate my life to Christ. There's hands going up already. One, two, three. Come on, there's hands all over this building. Come on, I see you. I see you. I see you, I see you. Okay, you can put your hands down. Would everybody just bow your head and close your eyes right now? Because we're a family at Transformation Church. We're a big family at Transformation Church. But nobody prays alone. And just repeat this prayer after me together. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus to rip the roof off for me. Yeah. Today, I give you my life. Change me transform me I'm yours I believe you lived and you died just for me and today 
I give you my life. In Jesus' name, amen.